Hello friends, how are you? Today we will see characteristics of steel and their physical properties. Do you know what is elasticity? I am pulling this rubber. So I have applied a force on it. And now I am removing it. So it came back to its original shape. So this is the elasticity. This is the rubber. I applied a tensile force on it. It changed its length slightly. Now I removed it. It is in its original length. So this was the tensile stress. Now this is the compressive stress. What is a brittle material? We will see with this twig. This is a dried twig. So let's apply force on this. It is not able to take more load. It just break broke into two pieces. Today we will see the properties called yield stress of the steel and modulus of elasticity. And what is ductility? Because of ductility, it we can draw wire. Let's watch. Today, we will see physical properties and specifications for structural steel. Now, we will see characteristics of steel. Steel, specifically structural steel, is fundamental to building and bridge construction. Steel has several qualities which makes it fit for the construction. It is available in wide range of shapes and grades, which gives it flexibility in design. It is the most economical construction material. It is strongest and uniform in quality and dimensionally stable. And it does not have any changes or it does not have any effect on alternate changes in temperature like freezing and thawing. It also has several unique qualities which make it fit as a construction material, like it can be alloyed or alloyed and heat treated to obtain required strength, toughness, according to construction needs. And on the top of that, it can be handled with regular construction or fabrication equipment. The term yield stress and tensile strength are used to describe the physical properties of structural steel and their response when applied external load. Here, suppose a round specimen of 1 inch square cross sectional area of any conventional length is clamped in a testing machine and applied a pull of 10 kits. So the bar is stress in tension at an average intensity of 10 kips per inch square. If the force is increased to 20 kips, then the bar is stress in tension at average intensity of 20 kips per inch square. The bar loaded as described is strain in direct proportion to the stress being resisted. As machine load increases, the bar will be stress and strain proportionally. Within certain limits, when external force is applied, it deforms steel slightly. But on the removal of forces, the steel will return to its original shape. This property of steel is known as elasticity. 
eventually a point is reached when elongation increases with no corresponding increase in stress this term is known as ductility and on the removal of forces steel will not return to its original shape most steel produces this sharp knee formation in their stress strain diagram the point at which this knee forms is called as yield point the steels which do not have this sharp knee formation the stress corresponding to it is called as yield strength it is denoted by fy and called yield stress expressed in the units kips per inch square in the stress strain diagram in elastic range the relationship between stress and strain is constant at normal temperature it is constant for the loading of tension and compression further it is also constant for all steels irrespective of their yield stress it is termed as modulus of elasticity denoted by the letter e the ratio is stress to strain and expressed in unit ksi its standard value is 29000 ksi for all steels strain is plotted on horizontal axis in the unit inches per inch and stress is plotted on vertical axis in the unit ksi a straight line representing the elastic range start from the point of zero stress and zero strain and it inclines upward to the point of yield stress this range is called as elastic strain then at the upper end of inclined straight line of the yield stress 50 ksi is shown an uneven horizontal line or the plateau which represents plastic strain the plastic deformation tends to cold work steel causing it to strain hard and sufficiently to require an additional amount of load for continual elongation throughout this strain hardening range the curve makes an upward inclination to the highest tensile strength it is rich further elongation or straining is accompanied by necking down of the bar a drop in the stress needed to continue the elongation soon there is a fracture of the bar the portion of the curve immediately following yield stress illustrates another important property of structural steel called ductility in the range metal is said to be in the state of plastic strain elongation is no longer in direct proportion to stress that is stress is no proportion to strain equal increment of stress are accompanied by disproportionately greater strains permanent distortion occurs and a load release the steel bar no longer reverts to its original length this characteristic is termed ductility it provides a considerable reserve of strength a fact that explains the ability of structural steel to absorb temporary overloads safely the ability of steel to support loads throughout large deformations forms the basis for plastic design ductility is measured in percentage of elongation at rupture steel is almost entirely consist of iron today steel is made from scrap steel which consist of recycled steel fuel air and limestone the steel is heated to liquefy and then it is cooled down 
and some other materials or some other substances are added like manganese carbon to increase its strength and ductility as we increase the carbon content in the steel steel strength and hardness also increases but there is a loss in ductility of the steel in the steel which is used for bridges and buildings consist of one fourth of one percent of carbon with a small amount of some other elements ASTM that is American Society of Testing and Materials develops standards specification for structural steel as we grow professionally we learn lot of new concepts and as a human being it is not easy to keep in mind all those concepts so my mentor akash patel from cv patel and associates advised me that i should know where will i find that particular concept for better accuracy and checking those concept so like here in astm a6 2008b we will find roll structural steel bars and plates shapes and sheet piling in astm a992 we will find wide flange shapes fy is equal to k 50 ksi astm a36 we will find carbon steel with minimum fy is equal to 32 ksi for all shapes groups astm a500 have hollow structure sections astm a529 has fy is equal to 50 ksi and 55 ksi and thickness of flange less than or equal to 12 inch and in plates thickness less than 1 inch astm a572 consists of hp shapes with fy is equal to 50 ksi astm a588 consists of corrosion resistant high strength low alloy steel for plates and bars for 50 ksi 46 ksi and 42 ksi ASTM A514 consists of quench and tempered alloy steel in minimum FY is equal to 9200 ksi plates and bars and ASTM A913 consists of low alloy steel jumbo steel sections which are not produced in USA we have seen in this video the characteristics of steel physical properties like yield stress tensile stress and stress strain graph we also saw the specifications of structural steel thank you so much to you all for being with me through this video i am really grateful for your support thank you so much please share the video like and subscribe the channel if you find this video useful then please share it will help others and subscribe to get notified about new videos